Queen Elizabeth's death has sparked renewed demands for the return of the stolen $400 million Kohinoor diamond to South Asia, but calls for reparations go beyond the return of the gemstone. Before British colonizers siphoned the subcontinent's wealth, India was one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Economist Utsa Patnaik estimates that Britain drained almost $45 trillion from India between 1765 and 1938. That's over 14 times more than the UK's annual gross domestic product today. Year after year, the British were actually taking away goods and the international value of these goods was going straight into the British uh, treasury, while the producers in India were being defrauded. Before the British East India India company took control of the subcontinent, it's estimated that India accounted for around 25% of the world's gross domestic product. When British colonizers left India, India's GDP had fallen to about 4% of the global share. After the East India Company gained monopoly control over Indian trade from 1765, the company introduced its own taxes in India. It used a portion of the tax money collected to purchase Indian goods, meaning the British were getting those goods for free. Those that they were cheating were not even aware they were being cheated. So essentially, they took enormous values of tropical commodities from India, which they sold internationally. So they got a great deal of gold and foreign exchange, which they kept for their own use. The British Crown took over direct control of India in 1858 and continued to cheat Indian producers and drain the country's wealth. The entire rise of industrial capitalism in Europe and later its diffusion to North America and to the colonies of settlement, all of this was really predicated on acquiring colonies of conquest and acquiring resources from them because most of these resources simply did not exist in the European heartland. The Kohinoor diamond itself was acquired through conquest and coercion. When the British annexed Punjab in 1849, they forced the handover of the diamond as a gift to Queen Victoria as part of the Treaty of Lahore. For Patnaik, the return of the Kohinoor would be a symbolic gesture. A few jewels here and there uh, really don't matter. I don't think it captures even a tiny, tiny fraction of uh, what they actually took. When it comes to reparations for colonial crimes and plunder, Patnaik believes that advanced capitalist countries should set aside a portion of their GDPs to pay unqualified annual transfers to low-income countries. Nothing can actually compensate for the enormous suffering and loss in life. But I think it is important to talk about reparations and to demand reparations because that will at least force people to look concretely at what happened in their respective countries.